Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Exceeden Protein X. In this tutorial video, I want to talk about recombinant bispecific antibodies. So, uh, the recombinant bispecific antibodies, these are the hot topic these days because uh, this kind of bispecific antibodies, these are pretty much useful to treat the cancer and also other therapeutic purposes. So, basically, this kind of recombinant bispecific antibodies, these are made by the SCFB or single chain fragment variable this technique so we need to know first that what is SCFB or single chain fragment variable so single chain fragment variable these are the type of recombinant antibody and this contain around 25 kb long sequence and that sequence contain light chain variable region and the heavy chain variable region of an antibody so these are the schematic diagram of this SCMP. So here it's showing that it contain heavy chain variable lesion and light chain variable lesion of an antibody and that joined together by a linker. And this linker basically um, made by the glycine and serine hydrophilic amino acid. And this is around 15 to 20 amino acid long this linker. So, by the SCFB, we can join two different monoclonal antibody to form bispecific antibody. So, here for example, I choose two different monoclonal antibody. These are the anti-VGF monoclonal antibody and anti-PD1 monoclonal antibody that to form, uh, to join by the SCFB and to form the VGF and PD1 bispecific antibody. So, how it this kind of bispecific antibody made so here you need to have the sequence the known sequence of the anti vgf monoclonal antibody and also you need to have the anti pd1 monoclonal antibody sequence then these two sequence we can join together by a, by a linker that linker i already talked about that this is the hydrophilic amino acid that is the glycine and serine residues so basically the anti-pd1 sequence not the the whole anti-pd1 sequence will take only the hv and lv it means that heavy chain variable lesion and the light chain variable lesion of the anti-pd1 sequence will pick and then that joined by a linker so finally the the plasmid that we get that is the this kind of sequence so anti vgf sequence and that is uh, joined by a linker with the anti pd1 hv and anti pd1 lv so this is the scfb all right and uh, here it contain only single start codon and one only one stop codon so basically when uh, there is a sequence in between the start codon and the stop codon that is a single chain so here by the linker this kind of single chain produced and this single chain contain also the heavy chain variable lesion and the light chain variable lesion that also joined by a linker so this is why this kind of sequence known as the single chain fragment variable so basically this kind of linker are the, the repeated sequence of the glycine and serine and that is the hydrophilic amino acid and that, that's why uh, it does not influence the solubility of this kind of plasmid. So after getting this kind of recombinant plasmid, need to transfer to the mammalian system or E. coli system, then we'll get the antibody. So after getting the antibody, we need to evaluate this kind of bispecific antibody for the binding affinity. So first, need to uh, get we need to load the vgf and pd1 and this antigen in onto the membrane all right and then need to incubate with the anti vgf monoclonal antibody so when we incubate with the anti vgf monoclonal antibody then you can see here this because this is a monoclonal antibody so it can bind only vgf but not the pd1 and again when we 
and the another membrane another membrane when we load the bgf and pd1 and when we uh, incubate with the bispecific antibody then here it's showing that this bispecific antibody it can target both antigen so it can bind with the bgf as well as the pd1 but for the pd1 antibody also it can bind only pd1 but not the vgf so here you can see the difference that uh, the or this kind of by antibody it can bind against both antigen so next is the recombinant by specific antibody so i'll i'll talk in details so this is the uh, the idd sequence this is the non idd sequence that we know all like that so here is the scfb so scfb basically these are the this scfb it uh, it can be joined either in the heavy chain part or in the light chain part so here if we assume that this idg is the anti vgf sequence so these are the anti vgf sequence and this scfb is the anti pd1 sequence so these two sequence then join together to form this kind of antibody so basically this is a heavy chain abundant because this scfb it joined in the heavy chain constant part so finally we we'll get this kind of sequence scfb that is that uh, anti vgf so anti vgf sequence and then there it is this kind of sequence it joined by a linker with the anti pd1 monoclonal antibody so another way we can join this kind of uh, scfb in the light chain constant part so here is the light chain constant part right so here is showing the light, light chain constant part so this scfb when joined in the light chain constant part that is known as the light chain abundant all right and here finally we will get this kind of sequence so here is the the anti vgf so in the lc there is the anti pd1 monoclonal antibody sequence it joined and here is the uh, the hv and hc part of this anti vgf all right so this is this is how we can make the the plasmid for the bi specific antibody so there are different kind of applications of the scfb first is the development of the bi specific antibodies in different format we simultaneously target two different antigens and second is the there are bi specific t cell engagers like cd3 or pd1 that bind with the t cell that bind with this kind of specific t cell antigen and also this kind of bi specific antibody also it can bind with the t1 specific antigen and then it brings t cells to a tumor site so this is how like uh, the this bi specific antibody when it bind with the cancer cell by this kind of antigen specific antigen and by another arm it also bind with the t cell because this is a pd1 sequence or cd3 sequence so this is how this t cell and cancer cell both bind together by this kind of antibody and then t cell it can easily recognize this cancer cell and then the killing signal it produced by the t cell so this is basically the cytotoxic t cell and then it can easily recognize this cancer cell and it can kills this cancer cells by this way so this is the very much wide application of this scfb also so this is called t cell mediated cytotoxicity of the cancer cells and also another important function of this scfb is that scfb can also be fused to cellular toxins radioisotope cytokines and enzymes for cancer autoimmune and or inflammatory therapeutic applications although scfb by specific antibody target simultaneously two antigens specifically but also it has some drawback so what kind of drawback so these are the drawback actually first is the scfb tend to have a lower affinities and also it has a long term lower long term stability and a higher likelihood to aggregate due to their small size so their rapid clearance from the blood can be drawback for a therapeutic applications where longer retention times often increase therapeutic efficacy so these are the main 
disadvantage of this uh, SCFB because SCFB it is a weaker binding with the antigen. Also, it has uh, it can easily it can eliminate from the from the body. So uh, these are the drawbacks of these SCFBs. So this is all about SCFB and by specific antibody sequence uh, how to make this kind of antibody sequence. So I hope this video will be helpful. If you like this video, kindly hit the like button, share it, and please and please subscribe my channel. And if you have any queries, kindly write in the comment section. Thanks.